Hi there, I'm Jake, and scientists don't generally look like this. Welcome to Project Science. Scientists. We refer to them vaguely as some sort of all-purpose discovery producing entity, and we often generalize them as a bunch of dudes in white coats working in dimly lit laboratories. But yeah, that's not particularly accurate. Scientists are responsible for studying science, and science seeks to understand how the world works. It's a vitally important job, especially now. And it can be incredibly complex at times, but those people doing that science are by and large just like you and me. Probably don't have these pants though. Understanding these people and their work is more important now than ever if we want to keep living on this planet. In part one of this infinity part series, I'm going to introduce you to just a few of the real people out there doing the real work that is scientific research. For this episode, biologists. So without any further ado from me, our first scientist, a biologist, a marine biologist. So what do you do? I study juvenile lumpfish, which is a very cool fish. Basically, I'm looking at their salinity tolerance because they can be used in the salmon aquaculture industry as a cleaner fish. So basically, salmon get sea lice, and right now they use chemicals to delouse them. Um, but if we can use fish like lumpfish, then we can actually be more environmentally friendly, and it's cost effective as well. So if I can figure out what salinities these lumpfish can tolerate, then we can hopefully use them for other species in aquaculture. I'm looking at their distribution, so seeing what salinities they actually live in in the bay. And to do that, I try to catch them to see where they are. So I do things like using plankton nets, trawl nets, as well as dip nets. My other part of the project is actually seeing which salinities they can tolerate. And to do that, I put them in different salinities and monitor their oxygen intake. Why fish? Why now? I always wanted to be a marine biologist. I've always been interested in the ocean and the creatures that live in it. In the last couple years, I've realized how cool fish actually are. So for a lot of people, a career in science is a matter of finding a niche within a subject area that you've always loved. But Jake, you say, that's true for a lot of fields. Why start with biology? Are you some kind of biologist or something? Maybe. But the real reason for starting with biology instead of another area of study, chemistry, physics, engineering, earth science, space science, material science, other science, is that the life sciences are what we all can most directly relate to in our everyday life. Heck, for food, we eat almost exclusively plants and animals, and biology does pertain a lot to our being alive. The realm of what we can study about life is incredibly broad, and the ways it can be studied are diverse. It's not all field work. There are a lot of other aspects to life and a lot of methods for studying it. I study a fungal pathogen called Geosmithia morbida, and it infects the eastern black walnut trees and causes a disease known as the thousand cankers disease. And our lab uses whole genome data to answer questions that pertain to what's making this fungus pathogenic. How do you go about answering those questions? My lab focuses a lot on combining the biology with the computer science and understanding the evolution of novel traits. And in my case, that trait is pathogenicity. Why are you doing this, Taruna? Why? I'm really interested in microbes. And a new up and coming field in science is metagenomics, where you are just looking at everything and anything from an environmental sample at the genetic level. I also consider myself a big conservationist, so I wanted to know if there was a way we can combine or we can utilize all these microbes that exist in our biosphere to the advantage of um, conservation purposes. With so many questions to be answered and so many approaches to answering them, it's very possible to go down a research path you don't expect. For instance, I studied animal ecology, then spent a whole bunch of time in plant molecular genetics only to do my graduate research studying carpenter bee social behavior. Is that what the first episode's about bees? Often scientists land on their field of study at the intersection of their overarching interests and their specific experiences. And speaking of bees, here's a segue. So what's your deal? The Integrative and Organismal Biology program is really great for exploring the narrative in nature because you can draw together so many different types of scientific application. 
So in the bee lab, we're able to study an organism which is inherently tied to many different biological processes, but we also bring to the table both field bio and bench bio type techniques to address really interesting questions which are themselves inherently um, interdisciplinary. I'm jealous of your beard. What got you interested in science? What I'm really interested in is the narrative that you can draw out of nature in a lot of different ways and how science can facilitate that process. The stories that are just going on in the world and how we can use empirical studies to figure out what's the closest thing to the true story going on here. There's a lot to cover about who scientists are and what they do. To say that this episode barely scratched the surface of just biology would still be to drastically undersell the breadth and depth of that and every subject. And I haven't even gotten started on all those other fields, so probably come back for those episodes too. However small of a window into the work as this may be, whatever degree of impact a given person's research may or may not have on your life specifically, these scientists are real people making real efforts to understand real facts about the real world around us. If you want to do it too, you absolutely can. Learning is so unbelievably important. The knowledge gained from science is for everyone, and anyone can be a scientist. Thanks for watching.